Yeah, how's uh, how's how's training been? Well, uh, Wisconsin has been shut down for a bit. So has Illinois and Iowa. So anywhere I could possibly go and train. So it's pretty much just doing it old old school. You know, a lot of body weights, a lot of running, and doing whatever I, whatever I can to to stay in shape and keep getting ready for uh, for the, my next fight. Yeah, we do uh, with my company. We do a lot of business there in the Midwest uh, with the jails, I guess, and everything there is shot down um yeah. it's been uh it's been pretty quiet i'm up in nova scotia in canada so okay we, uh, we're pretty much on lockdown too we just opened up now parks so we can go out and like run in parks but it's gonna be a while before we can go do jujitsu or anything fun like that so it's gonna be a little while yeah yeah i was it was unfortunate too because i had a really good training regimen set up before all everything was going down and um you know getting ready for my matchup against um phil bro and obviously it got postponed slash canceled and uh they ended up calling me up for for another one um but haven't haven't been able to do really anything that you know i don't i don't can't go to the gym can't hold mitts can't spar can't can't do any of that stuff right now so yeah it's it's definitely nice to have some events going on uh like as a ufc fan and as a sports fan in general it's finally nice a little bit of hope i guess with the world uh to see it going on. What, what are your thoughts on the UFC putting putting these cards together, getting something done? I think it's good. Um, I really do. It, it, a lot of people was messaging leading up to the event this past Saturday, and it was a stacked card. It really was. Um, I think they got another another fight tonight and another one coming up on Saturday. So it's good because it gives us something to look forward to. Uh, setting aside like me actually fighting, I'm a fan of it. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'm always that guy buying a pay-per-view, you know, having some buddies over to watch this event or that event. So, um, I mean, set aside the competitive side, me, I just love watching the sport itself. So, a it, it, little bit of taste of, of normal, you know what I mean? So, it, it's nice to get look forward to some event on a Saturday night, watch the fights, you know, chat with your buddies. So, it, it was it was pretty cool. Um. It was funny too because uh, it was a, a closed event, obviously. Yeah. So there's no fans, stuff like that. Um, I did that. Uh, I used to fight for another promotion, and we had a reality show. And same concept. It was quiet. You know, there's no fans, nothing. They were just filming for the show. Um, so I, I would much rather have fans, but <laughs> it's nice to at least have something going on. Do you, as someone who's competed, I guess, in an empty arena, do you notice the, obviously you notice the difference when you're walking out and during the intermission or the breaks, but do you notice it while you're fighting or is that all zoned out anyway? I'm, I zone out a lot. Um, but so you really don't hear the crowd and I barely hear the coaches, you know, calling out directions and stuff. Um, but it is significantly different not having all that commotion going on in the background and it's just silence, you know, and you hear a person talking to this one person here. It's, um, it's not all mushed together when you have fans and it's such a loud environment. So, um, yeah, you definitely notice it. It's a lot more motivating when there is, you know, there are fans in the, in the stadium and, and everything, but, um, but yeah, it's, it, you definitely, you can definitely tell that there's no cheering going on. Yeah, you were, like you mentioned, you were scheduled to fight uh, Philip Rowe a little while ago. Uh, obviously, things fell through with the pandemic and everything. Uh, you mentioned you weren't able to train. Is, is there a timeline you're looking at, or is it just going to be depending on as soon as things open up, you'll get back into your training and, uh, and go from there? Or is it something like if you got a call tomorrow, you'd be, you'd be on a plane the day after? Well, it's, it's, it's one of those things you... Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Like me, yeah. I, I cut a decent amount of weight. You know, I, I usually walk around, I'd say anywhere from 195 to 215, depending on what I'm, what the, the type of training. If I'm doing more power lifting, uh, more protein, or if I need to focus more on speed and things like that, you know. Um, so it definitely fluctuates, you know. So when I did the short notice call for my first fight, and um, I, I just want to make sure that, I have a good, I have a good opportunity to put in the right type of camp, you know, and once, you know, setting aside the fights, 
once our gym can actually open up, you know, we, they have to follow the, you know, each state has to follow the regulations and stuff, whatever they, they're going to do. Um, but once those are cleared up, just get back in there and be active in the gym all the time. Um, and that way, if I do get a short notice call or something, it's, it's just another day, you know, I just be ready on a regular basis. So is, uh, is Philip Rose still the, still the name you want, or does it really yeah, matter? Yeah, I've actually, me and him uh, exchanged a few messages, uh, through Facebook. Mutual respect is there. Um, both kind of wishing each other the best while we're going through this. Um, uh, but yeah, we both told each other that we're going to, you know, that we, we are who we want to fight. We want to fight each other. Um, and just out of good mutual respect and, uh, we'll grab a beer afterwards and celebrate. So, um, so yeah, that's definitely who, who I'm eyeing to fight. Um, you know, I, I, I like the matchup. It's a unique challenge. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that matchup. So that's, that's what I'm training for. But, you know, if they, um, once things kind of pass over a little bit and they throw a different name my way, I, that's, that's fine. You know, I, I just want to get in there and, and start competing. And, uh, that's, I'm getting antsy sitting around, you know? Yeah. You're almost, uh, 10 months out now, I think, right? Nine, nine a bit. Yeah. Almost yeah. 10 months. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of the way it worked out. Um, I had my first, uh, uh, fight which was like a 10 days notice um and then for my normal work the holidays are the busy time you know so um once the holidays passed i uh, started getting on a pretty good routine uh getting ready for my fight against philip so it, it's been a bit but um i'm i'm patient but i think uh, i'm extra antsy because of everything going on in the world right now did you uh have any injuries or anything like that from your last fight that you that you uh healed up during the time off or no honestly um i really don't run across uh an injury in in the fight i don't think i've ever left a fight being actually injured you know um i have you know a sore back or knees are tender stuff like that but nothing that would prevent me from actually um accepting another fight I watched uh, I w- before this. I watched your interview with MMA Futures from back in 2016. So it was like three and a half years ago. I don't even know if you remember that. Um, and you said your goal was to reach the UFC. So you've done that. You've accomplished your your goal from three years ago. What's the goal now? Well, the, I, I said it from day one. I you know, I want to I want to fight for the UFC. That 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 was always the goal. Um, but to kind of clarify, I don't feel like I've arrived until I get in there and get my hands raised. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, I don't want to just be that guy that goes in, lose a couple and I'm not going to run around and call myself a UFC vet. If I don't, if I don't get in there and I'm not competitive and, and win some fights. So, um, yeah, honestly, um, just keep taking it a fight at a time. That's how I've been through my whole career. I just focus on whatever the next challenge is in front of me and not look, you know, five years, 10 years down the road. Um, you know, I'm 30, 36 so um i'm honestly just looking to just keep lining up as many fights for them that i can and see where see where we're at in a couple years you know so what was the uh so i'm assuming that was kind of the thought process behind taking that short notice fight uh like if i take it on short notice i'm in the ufc regardless of whether i win or lose um what what sort of things went through your mind when you accepted that that fight on short notice did you ever consider you know what too too short notice i'll i'll wait it out <laughs> no no that they, they call i'm gonna i'm gonna answer uh, i mean yeah. i've been waiting for that call for 10 11 years 12 years however long i've been fighting um so i always knew they call i'm i'm, I'm saying yes that's that's it's about time you know um maybe it's still you know five five years too late but um would have liked it in my younger days <laughs> but uh yeah i was I, I was always gung ho. I was gonna take that fight, no matter who was against or anything like that. Um, and then uh, the the opponent. I mean, he's five and zero in the UFC. Claudio Silva. Yeah. Um, I, I still felt that I I could, I, you know, I could beat him. You know, I was a huge underdog, but I, I felt stylistically where my wrestling, you know, I, where I know my wrestling background can come into play. My striking is you know, tremendously better than where I started. I, I prefer to stand up now. 
Um, so I just felt like it was actually a pretty good matchup too for my my first fight. You know, going there, be a guy that's at the time four and zero, pull up the upset and and keep going on. So, but as far as the thought of not accepting it, it wasn't even an option. You know, I um, as soon as uh, the, uh, my manager hit me up and I I said yes, let's do it. Um, my <laughs> Folks had to focus on the weight cut. That was the biggest challenge for me, honestly. I had to drop about 45 pounds or so in that 10-day notice. Um, but, I, yeah, I called my boss. Hey, I need a week off. <laughs> Don't ask questions. I need it off. Trust me. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you're 11-2 and two now, and your only two losses are against UFC – former or current UFC fighters, uh, Eric Wisely and, like you said, Claudio Silva – which the Eric Wisely one dates back like 11 years. Mm-hmm. So you went like solid 10 years without, without a loss. So you had, you put together quite, quite a bit of momentum there. What did you look to uh, implement, I guess, in your next, next fight that you didn't get going against Claudio um, to help build that momentum back up? I think just overall, I'm going to be a lot more prepared, you know? Um, I mean, at that time, I, it, I already had a break away from, from the sport and was getting pulled in different directions. Um, you know, I, I, I have a son and I got a family to support. So if I'm not fighting, I'm not making a paycheck. So I got to put my effort in my, in my career. And, um, I, I wasn't training at that time when I got offered the fight. So, um, it's not really a matter of do something different. It's just, I'm going to be prepared. It's, it's as simple as that. If I'm prepared and at my, at my best ability, I, I'm very, very difficult to beat. And, um, you know, between my wrestling, my, my ground game, submission defense, um, my, my, my striking and just my overall understanding of the game, I, I know how far I can take it. So as long as I'm prepared leading up to the fight, even 80%, it, it'll be a very difficult night for the majority of people I fight. You were on, uh, you were on Fight Master, correct? Mm-hmm. What, was, uh, what was that experience like? It was it was pretty cool. Um, I that I, I think I went in that show. I was six and one, um, and to find out some of the legends of the game, you know, Randy Couture, Frank Shamrock, uh, Greg Jackson, who's also a phenomenal coach, yeah. Joe Warren. Um, just knowing the coaches that were going to be involved, uh, I was excited for that opportunity, and I felt like it was, you know. I was only competing at kind of small regional shows, even though I had wins over UFC vets at that point, but it was still not at a larger stage. So I felt like it was my chance to go out there and just see, see how I am, you know, against some, some very competitive guys. And, you know, they had like Joe Riggs, they had um, several other guys, Nick Barnes. Um, There was a lot of, a lot of talent, a lot of unknown names, uh, a lot of names that have been in Bellator or obviously Joe Riggs was, was one of the bigger names on the show and just go out there and compete against some of the better guys in the world. And uh, by, the, by the time it was all said and done, I think the biggest thing I took away from it was it was a confidence booster. You know, I um, learned a lot and I felt like I walked away from that show better and knowing I can really make this you know, this dream of mine happened. I can take it to the high stage and compete with them as well. Do you, you, do you remain um, in contact with some of those coaches? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, a lot, a lot of the guys, when we, when we first left the show, um, we, we ended up creating a, a Facebook group of just the 16 competitors. And uh, we've, you know, we've chatted from time to time. Um, you know, I do keep in ta- contact with Randy. Um, and just, you know, maybe every other month or a couple times a week, it's sporadic based on each other's schedules. But um, pretty much the, the main guys I keep in contact with are the guys that were on my team. Um, you know, Mike Bronzoulis and um, even uh, even guys like Nick Barnes, who was one of the guys I competed against. It's, you know, we, we definitely do keep in contact. I love that show with teammates and, and friends. A lot of uh, you mentioned that uh, you're a UFC fan. A lot of fighters don't watch fights. They're just like, ah, oh, whatever. Like Nate Diaz is a great example. Um, did you watch the, the the card this past weekend? 
Oh yeah, of course. Well, what were your uh, what were your thoughts on that that main event? Wow, uh, Gaethje he showed up. <laughs> um, it, it he he put together one heck of a performance. You know, just the biggest thing uh, and the adjustments he made early on. He was a wild guy. You know, he was swinging and going and going, um, and it he put himself out of position. He put himself in dangerous spots to get counterstruck, and just wasn't wasn't being as strategic as he should be. And, you know, that fight, he showed a lot of patience. He didn't rush in to finish a guy, finish Tony when he had him hurt several times. Um, he played a very smart game, and all of his tools really came together for that one. And uh, I saw um, – uh, it, it, it also didn't seem like Tony showed up the yeah. high pace, high pressure, and having power behind his punches – um, he made a post where, like, three weeks ago where he made weight for the yeah. fight because that was the original date. Um, I think that might have hurt him a little bit. You know, when, you, when you're training for a fight and going through that weight cut, that takes a toll on your body, and you've got to rebound from it, you know? So um, I've done that before, especially through my, my wrestling, of making those back-to-back weigh-ins. And when it's such a big cut, I don't know what he walks around at, but... Um, making those back-to-back cuts, you lose a little bit of steam. You lose a little bit of that power because your your weight's fluctuating, you know? So um, I personally have felt that when I've made weigh-ins, you know, so close together. You know, I, I, I lose a little bit of uh, a little bit of power and a little bit of the steam. So I don't know if that impacted him or not, but it was just one of the things I thought of when when he was posting that he made the weight and how he showed up as just makes me wonder if that impacted a little bit, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I assumed once I got to the round three, I thought Tony was going to take over. I was like, Gagey's going to gas. He's done in the past, but he was calm, composed, and Tony just didn't seem to define his game. And it was a, uh, it was unusual. But uh, mm-hmm. I was, I was, I'm a huge Gagey fan, so um, happy, but at the same time felt for Tony because I didn't think he needed to take the fight. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he doesn't turn fights down. How he shows up in there, it's hard not to wa- enjoy watching him fight. Um, but with how, how patient Gaethje was, um, he wasn't – he didn't need to go that hard and, and blow so much steam, you know, in the early rounds. He, he was winning the rounds and doing damage and wasn't exerting himself, a, you know, a lot, so – yeah, it was a smart, smart fight by him. And what's your uh, what's your prediction for the Gaethje Khabib fight, which I'm assuming is going to happen uh, unless Connor sneaks up and snatches it or something? <laughs> but uh, Connor does cool. that, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, uh, it's hard not to, you know, because Gaethje is, is so current in our minds, and because you just fought and how well he showed up. Um, I honestly don't know. Um, because I, I can see Khabib taking him down and and doing what he does against everybody else. Um, so, I don't know. Honestly, normally I have a pick. Uh, if I was going to pick somebody right now, I'd probably say Khabib, you know. Uh, that's not who I want to win. Or I'm, Yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a coin toss for me right now. I, I don't know who's going to win that fight. All right. And, uh, and lastly... Uh... MMA, or uh, Fight Island. Is that something that you'd be like all all on board for? Like sign I'm me down up. to fight on an island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sign me up. I um that would be pretty cool to go to. Uh, wherever it's at, if it's if it's truly in the works and, or a done deal, you know all the speculation going on. Um, yeah, sign me up. I'll you know it, that'd be fun. I I've always wanted to go um, overseas as well, and I haven't had the chance yet. So. Um, I'm, I'm trying to use the opportunity I have to also go abroad and, you know, go, go somewhere. I'm, I normally wouldn't just <laughs> fly over to. So, yeah, may as well see the world travel, gain some experience and learn, learn about new culture as well. While yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a people watcher. I, I like, uh, I like going to places and, and looking at people and admiring the history or, you know, the structures, whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, I would love to go over there. My my top two places to go to, um, which it's not realistic for the fighting. You know, I want to go to Cairo, Egypt. I'm a history buff. 
and Germany. Those are two places I'd like to go, but um, really any, anywhere overseas, something other than the Midwest would be cool. <laughs> yeah, Germany's, uh, Germany's amazing, and, and the UFC does go there, so that's, that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, Egypt, is. Egypt may not be, but <laughs> Germany could be. Yeah. All right, and uh, last question, non-MMA related. So you've wrestled, you've had to cut weight for wrestling, you've had to cut weight for uh, fighting. Is there one food that's impossible to cut out of your diet? <laughs> Icy pops. Icy pops. Icy pops. Yeah, uh, they don't put on a lot of a lot of weight on me, and you know it's kind of one of my late nights, late late nights uh, snacks. If I'm, you know, a little thirsty or a little hungry, I'll I'll just grab one of my icy pops and and have a popsicle or something. So that that's the one diet I've I've always had through high school, college, MMA. It's the one thing I I, I limit myself to, but I don't cut it out. All right, man. Well, uh, thank you. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you can get back into training soon, and hopefully we'll see you fight maybe in on Fight Island, if not Kazakhstan, if not Egypt, wherever. <laughs> uh, hopefully you get a fight abroad, and uh, looking forward to seeing you back in there. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah. All right, man. See ya.